let it marinate. Everybody got no, let it marinate. Come on, just let it marinate. You've bought a great laptop, for instance, MacBook with Type C, and you came home after a pretty, you know, intense day, and you want to watch a movie or edit some photos or edit a video on a pretty nice big and 4K screen. This is the 27-inch monitor from BenQ, and also I have a monitor from LG today for a comparison and review. Pretty complicated names, guys, but pretty good products. Let's review. Let's go. What's good guys, my name is Alek Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On and Tech Kitchen. So today we're comparing, I guess, the best for the price 4K monitors with Type-C compatibility from LG and from BenQ. We'll compare those with my iMac 5K and also we'll have a look at different specs, settings, features and all that stuff and we'll decide which one is better or maybe we'll find out something else. So stay tuned and let's go. And of course, I put the monitor away from me because it was very uncomfortable with the monitor here. So a lot of B-roll for this video, enjoy. Okay guys, now let's start off with the names. So the two monitors, monitors LG 27UL850-W, it's a 4K monitor, as I said, it costs around 400 to $500, depends uh, on where you buy it. And also we have here the BenQ EW2780U, which costs exactly the same, or maybe a little bit like 10 to $20 more. LG has USB Type-C one meter cable in the kit, white color, also the DisplayPort cable and HDMI 2.0 cable. But BenQ has only HDMI 2.0 cable in the kit, so it's a little bonus to LG. So I have my uh, MacBook Pro calibrated, so it's a pretty accurate color. And uh, the closest color to my MacBook was in BenQ model, because it's a 10-bit IPS panel and it was very close to the calibrated monitor right here. And the LG was a little bit off, and also it's an 8-bit panel and AFRC technology, and it basically converts 8-bit to kind of 10-bit, but it's not the real 10-bit. So now it's like one and one score, but LG gets one more extra point for the ability to rise up your monitor, to swivel it different ways, to, you know, you can basically do whatever you want to with this monitor. And BenQ stand is pretty much fixed. It can only tilt a little bit front and back, but nothing else. If you want to swivel it, you just rotate the whole construction and it doesn't raise up or doesn't lower. So it's a little bonus to LG once again. But the game is pretty close there because the BenQ menu system is much better, the joystick is more precise, at least to me, and it has a couple of function buttons so you can assign those buttons to get some fast access to different menu you know, options. But LG also gets ahead once again because it was less laggy in terms of the connection. So when it goes down to sleep or when you disconnect your laptop and connect it back to LG monitor, it was less laggy. It was pretty consistent and I had just a couple of lags. I've been using those two monitors for over two weeks like a week for one and a week for another. And the BenQ was a little bit more laggy when it goes down to sleep. Sometimes it turns up and uh, you know doesn't appear to be a second monitor or something. So LG wins here. But instead, BenQ has much better speakers. It has two speakers with five watts each and it sounds a lot better than LG's. First time I heard LG's speaker was like, what? Is it even, you know, <laughs> it sounds so bad. So if you use the LG, you'd better use the external speakers, not the built-in ones. But instead, BenQ has much better 
speakers it has two speakers with five watts each and it sounds a lot better than lg's first time i heard lg's speaker was like what is it even you know <laughs> it sounds so bad so if you use the lg you'd better use the external speakers not the built-in ones but lg has more ports it has a display port two hdmi ports usb type c port and also two usb ports like a hub but unfortunately the BenQ monitor has only two hdmi ports usb type c and display port the contrast ratio in LG monitor is 1000 to 1 and in BenQ monitor it's 1300 to 1, so BenQ wins here. And now about the similarities, so I'm not going to give any points to each monitor because it's just the similar features and the first one is being the matte finish of the surface of your monitor. Uh, my iMac 5K has the, you know, pretty glancy glass glass, I don't know, reflective surface and this is the matte finish and uh, I enjoy the glass surface more but professionals would say probably that the matte finish is better so no complaints here, it's just okay. The viewing angles are exactly the same, 178 degrees on vertical and horizontal, so draw here. Both monitors will provide your laptop with USB Type-C cable, 60 watts of power, so you'll be able to charge your laptop simultaneously, but if you have something like MacBook Pro 16-inch, it draws a little bit more power, so you'll be slowly losing the juice in your battery and once it will die uh, during your work, so probably it's not the best choice for 16-inch models and some, you know, pretty hungry for power laptops. But overall, it is an option and you can always plug in something different, like a normal charging cable. But for a MacBook Pro 13-inch, it's more than enough. 60 watts of power is like through the roof. The HDR mode is existent in both of those monitors, but I think that HDR mode is kind of a gimmick. It's not a real feature of those monitors. And if you really want to watch an HDR content, you can buy a you know, special normal HDR TV and there is not a ton of HDR content out there, so let's just say it has HDR and let's move on. Both monitors have 350 nits of brightness, which is pretty enough in my opinion, and they even get a little hot to the touch when they work a little bit. So 350 nits, okay. Both monitors are Adobe sRGB 99%, which means they could be used for professional work as a photographers, videographers, designers, you definitely can use those monitors, but you definitely need to calibrate them first or to use your laptop monitor as a reference monitor if it is calibrated before you bought the external monitor. Both monitors are 60 Hz, so it's not gaming monitors by any means, but it's more than enough for video work, photo work, so just for work, for regular work, for, you know, watching movies at home, etc. So it's a good one. And now some small, you know, advantages of those two monitors. The LG has the special bracket for your cable management, so it's pretty nice and tidy on your desktop. And also you can have the same, but like in a door, like a hinge or a door, you can basically hide all the cords behind it and it's um, built into the stand. So it's a draw here, but the LG monitor has a huge power brick. It's just huge and heavy and it's white and it's pretty tough to hide it somewhere. But on the other hand, the BenQ monitor has built-in power brick, so the only thing you need is a power cord and that's it, no more power bricks, so the BenQ wins here, definitely. Let's talk about pixels per inch. Both monitors have 163 pixels per inch. For instance, iMac 5K has 218 pixels per inch and it's much more crisp and uh, detailed and you cannot see individual pixels when you look at it like very closely. But on those monitors from LG and BenQ, you definitely can see individual pixels even from 30 to 40 centimeters away from the monitors. And by the way, iPhone 12 Pro Max has 458 pixels per inch. So in comparison, 163 on both LG and BenQ looks like not a lot at all, but it's okay. Both monitors have some different modes like saving your eyes mode for text reading or for you know reducing the blue color mode but those modes are not good for professional work with video or photos so I'm not taking those into consideration 
And uh, also the bo both monitors have this amount, 100 by 100, so you can basically mount it to the wall or to a different stand if you wish, especially the vacuum monitor because it's you know not very rotatable on a native stand. And both monitors have headphone jacks for plugging in your headphones, for instance, or you know speakers. So let's conclude. I got those two monitors for review because one day I want to sell my iMac 5K and to buy something like a MacBook Pro 16 inch with M1X chip, the second generation of M1 computers. And I want to take it with me when I travel somewhere, but also I'd like to take it home and simply plug in one cable, USB Type-C for instance, and be able to work with a bigger screen to see my timeline, to see the picture overall, and just to have a better working experience. And actually those two monitors are pretty okay for this type of stuff, and I'm very satisfied with the results, but also I'd like to take for a review a 21 to 9 aspect ratio LG monitor, so maybe it will be a better suit for my needs because I do make a lot of videos and I need a bigger, you know, wider timeline. Maybe it will be a better option. And basically you can arrange in Final Cut your viewing monitors in a different way. You can set some, you know, browser here and timeline and viewers here or just viewers in your back screen. I mean the, the native screen and everything else on the top. So it's just a matter of your taste. So guys, please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Which monitor do you prefer? Which one did you like most? I did like the BenQ model better. And if I was choosing the model right now, I would choose a BenQ because it's overall a better feeling about this monitor, at least for me. If it had a better you know, stand with some height adjustments and swivel adjustments, it would be much better. But it is what it is. It's a pretty good monitor for the money around 400 to 500 bucks, as I said. So I'm waiting for your comments down below, guys. Also, you can hit the like and subscribe buttons, as I say in my videos, and the notifications bell, of course. This was Oleg Nikitin, my tech kitchen, and No Limits on channel. I hope I helped you a little bit, guys, in choosing a good monitor for your Type-C computer, and see you in the next video, guys. Take care, bye. Hey.